Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell says employment, unemployment, is worse than the, at the worst point of the Great Recession. He also said the actual unemployment rate should be closer to 10 percent than currently 6.7. And the pandemic led to the largest 12-month drop in the job market since 1948. Now, the House and Education and Labor Committee last night advanced its proposal for a $15 an hour minimum wage to be part of the coronavirus relief package. The plan will increase the minimum wage incrementally each year before reaching 15 bucks in 2025. The CBO office says that despite this increase lifting Americans out of poverty, it will ultimately cost jobs, over a million of them. Joining us now is Joel Griffith, research fellow for the Heritage Foundation. Uh, Joel, we just heard, as I mentioned, from uh, the Fed chief that this could be the uh, greater unemployment than we had during the last great recession that we came out of. Now, we came out of it with the slowest recovery, one of the slowest recoveries in history, in American history. A lot of people say that was because we increased taxes and increased regulations into a, instead of doing exactly the opposite, which is what you're supposed to do coming out of a recession. So we're killing jobs coming out of a worse jobs market than the Great Recession, right? Right. And this minimum wage increase that's proposed, we know that that'll actually add to that calamity. We know that this will destroy job opportunities for those that need it most. These are individuals that are learning to speak English, people that are have criminal records, people that don't have edu the education or experience that the rest of us have. This is going to destroy opportunities for them. And as you referenced, the Congressional Budget Office has also uh, estimated that for every person that is lifted out of poverty, there are going to be more than one person that's going to lose their job as a result. We see this happen in other cities across the country. We've seen this happen in Seattle. And now Congress is proposing to do this for the entire country. What a disaster as we're trying to recover from this recession caused by the shutdowns. Now, of course, uh, one of the major differences between now and coming out of the last recession, 2008, 2009, is we're also coming out of the pandemic and we're, we're going to be coming out of the lockdowns throughout 2021 into 2022. That should give Biden a cushion. Uh, so we'll see this tremendous increase in world economic activity, uh, which will mean more jobs from the private sector. Will that cushion him enough uh, so that we don't notice uh, the, the harm to jobs until years later? No, this harm will be felt. And that's because of these uh, the minimum wage increase will be concentrated in those industries that have a lot of employees that will be earning, that are earning under $15 an hour. Think about the hotel sector, restaurants, travel. These are sectors that have been most impacted by the shutdowns. We know that restaurants, about a fifth of all restaurants, went out of business. Restaurant employment went down by 20%. Putting this type of a minimum wage doubling on them is like throwing a brick at somebody drowning instead of a life preserver. This makes no sense. You know, minimum wage hikes are, are wonderful. Wage increases are wonderful. But that is really stems from people gaining experience and being more productive and having more technology right. to work with. When you go ahead and do this, you're basically saying if you don't produce less or more than $36,000 a year, it's better off that you're not working at all. Now, on the campaign trail, Joe Biden was saying that all these green new jobs that he's going to produce will will make up for the, the jobs loss of the Keystone Pipeline. We have heard this before. In 2010, he, he headed up the recovery summer in which he claimed we'd have 500,000 new jobs, many of them new green jobs, every month for that summer. We ended up the full three-month summer with a deficit of jobs. Uh, so that fell flat in its face. Is it is it likely to be that bad? Or again, because of the cushion coming out of the lockdowns and also because we started the Biden administration after this relatively strong economy of, of the Trump administration. I mean, the jobs before the pandemic, I'd never seen a case where you had more jobs than job seekers. So you had this incredible jobs market right up to the pandemic. And that did kind of give us a base to work on that the Europeans didn't have. Yeah, well, with any of these big government programs, the politicians like to point to the very visible jobs that are created, but yet they ignore all the jobs that are lost, the net jobs lost. You know, we can look to places like California to see what this Green New Deal or the Green New Deal light would look like. It looks like higher unemployment. And also, even for those that are fortunate enough to keep their jobs, it means higher energy costs. And it's not just higher energy costs when it comes to traveling or heating your home or putting in your air conditioning. Energy costs also impact 
manufacturing. Right. Industrial manufacturing costs are twice as high. The electricity component in places like California, that's what we have to look forward to here. It's a net drag on typical family income. And you know what hurts the most is that most of the job creation, percentage-wise, during the Trump administration was in blue-collar jobs. And that was also most of the, of the wage increases, percentage-wise, again, uh, was in blue-collar. They're precisely the people that are being hurt by these measures that we have now. And the Keystone Pipeline, uh, in terms of, of increasing the minimum wage, which hurts the, the lowest people on the ladder. I mean, it's, it's really uh, hurting blue-collar in a, in a bad way. We'll have to, have to wait and see see what happens with uh, when the lockdowns turn around. Joel Griffith, please come back and see us again. Good to see you. Appreciate it. Coming up. Thanks for watching the Heritage Foundation's YouTube channel. With more than half a million members, we are the nation's largest conservative research and education institution. We believe the principles and ideas of the American founding are worth conserving and renewing. Please help us further our mission by subscribing to this channel and sharing our videos with your family and friends.